Okay, today we're going to be dropping things into a black hole. So I'll drop some planets in a black hole and then I'll drop some stars in a black hole. And we're going to be talking about if you can ever actually see something go into a black hole. So I have here a ping pong ball that I coated with black 3.0. So it's absorbing over 99% of the light from the room. So it looks almost completely black, very similar to what a black hole would look like. Now if this were actually a black hole, you'd be able to tell how much mass were inside of it based on its diameter. And the diameter of a black hole is called its event horizon. But inside the center of the black hole, there's something called a singularity. And the singularity is where all the mass has compressed down so far that it's become a single point. But since we can't see anything inside of a black hole, I'm not gonna talk about it in terms of the singularity inside of it. I'm just going to talk about it in terms of the event horizon around it. An event horizon just means that this is the point at which the escape velocity of the black hole is greater than the speed of light. So that means that no information, nothing including light, can ever escape outside of the event horizon. So that's why it appears black. Anything that goes on inside of it is completely forbidden from our view from the outside. So to give you an idea of how much mass is contained in a black hole, if this were actually a black hole, to get a black hole this size with an event horizon this big, you would need to compress the mass of the entire Earth. So if the Earth collapsed down into a black hole, this would be the size of it, pretty tiny. Now if this were a real black hole, it would look a little bit different than this. The main difference that you would see from observing it from far away is that it lenses the light around it. And that's because black hole's gravity is so strong that it creates a lensing effect of light. And to be clear, this gravitational lensing happens for things besides black holes, but it's just harder to see. You have to have an extremely high mass in a small area to get very big lensing to happen. In fact, one way they proved the general theory of relativity is they were able to measure the light coming from a star that should have been behind the sun, but the sun was actually bending the light from the star so that it went around the sun and you were able to see the light from the star. So anything with gravity creates this gravitational lensing, but black holes just do it a lot. Okay, so let me first add in a black hole. So this black hole has the mass of one million suns. So you can see the gravitational lensing here. I'll put the black hole so we can see it with this galaxy behind it so we can see it a little bit better. Okay, so we're gonna start off by launching Earth into the black hole. And then we'll see what happens when you try to put stuff in orbit around the black hole. Okay, so this is in real time, the Earth falling into a black hole. Three, two, one. Whoa, there it goes, into the event horizon. Okay, this is Uranus being shot into a black hole. Three, two, one. So how about we grab a star called Wolf 359, and we're gonna drop it in. Three, two, one. and then Regal. Look how big Regal is. Whoa. So basically some of it got sucked in and then some of it just got blown apart. The tidal forces of the gravity just blew the whole star apart. By the way, if you think our sun's big, here's the sun. Here's the star called Regal. 
And here's the star called Betelgeuse. Now here's what it would look like when it orbits the black hole. Notice that as it, as it orbits around the black hole, the stars get ripped apart. Now watch what happens when we put this super massive star by it. You can see the black hole sucks off some of the gas from plasma from the star as the star orbits the black hole. Now if you're ever playing with stars, be careful that you don't put two stars too close together because watch what happens. <laughs> Supernova. Okay, so in all these instances in the software, when the object finally got near the event horizon of the black hole, it basically just disappeared. But that's not what would actually happen, and let me explain why. So according to Einstein's theory of general relativity, he showed that when you get nearer to a massive object, time slows down based on an observer looking at the clock of somebody moving closer to the object. Let me show you what I mean. When I'm far away from the black hole, this is what the clock looks like. It's moving at normal speed for me, and it's moving at normal speed for you, the observer. But then watch what happens when I get near the black hole. You can see that time has slowed down. But now if I'm the person with the clock and I'm the one doing the moving, if I get closer to the black hole, it doesn't matter. My time looks the same no matter what. So when I talk about time dilation, remember that I'm always talking about time dilation for an observer looking at something falling into a black hole. For you, for you, the person doing the movement with the clock, your time always looks the same. You will always have a clock that looks to move like this. But looking at someone else's clock going near a black hole or near another massive object, you'll see their time slow down. Now time dilation doesn't just happen for black holes, it happens for anything with mass, including the Earth. In fact, because the core of the Earth experiences slightly more gravity than the crust of the Earth, that means that the time of the core is actually moving slightly slower than the time on the Earth's crust. So over the age of the Earth, that means that the core is actually two and a half days younger than the crust. So time dilation is not some obscure thing only due to black holes, but it's happening right here on Earth right now. In fact, we even need to correct for this based on satellites that are orbiting the Earth because the satellites are a little bit further from Earth and so they experience a little bit less gravity and so their clocks run a little bit faster than ours down here on Earth. So gravitational time dilation is a real thing happening daily around us and we have to continually correct for it or our GPS satellites would be way off. So what does this mean for a black hole? Well, a black hole has such extremely strong gravity that at the event horizon, the time dilation is so strong that time does not move at all. So basically, if you were watching a clock fall into a black hole, what you would see is this. You'd see it out here moving normally, but as it got closer and closer to the black hole, it would appear to slow down, slower and slower and slower and slower until it got to the event horizon. So if the clock were right at the event horizon, it would just completely stop. And when time is stopped, that means movement is stopped because if you have to move somewhere, you go a certain distance in a certain amount of time. And if, you, if no time is passing, that means that nothing is happening. So really, watching something fall into a black hole would look like it's moving faster and faster and faster, and then it would slow down as it got to the black hole and slow more and more and more, and it would asymptotically approach the event horizon, 
and then basically it would just stick on the surface like this. It can't get any closer because time has now been frozen for it. Well then you may ask, well why isn't the surface of a black hole just covered with all the stuff that has fallen into it? Well that's because the thing that's stuck on its surface doesn't just continue to radiate light that we can see. What happens is called redshift. Let me explain what that actually means. Why does something get dimmer as it gets near a black hole? Well it has to do with gravity and potential energy. So pretend that this is the surface of the Earth. You know that if you throw a ball up, it moves up and it starts to slow down and then it turns around and comes back down. So when you first throw the ball up, the ball has a lot of velocity, so it has a high kinetic energy. And as it goes higher and higher up, it loses that kinetic energy until eventually it stops and has no more kinetic energy. And then, of course, it falls back down. But let's say instead of a ball, let's say you had a piece of light, so you had a photon. Well, the photon has to follow the same laws as the ball. It has to lose energy as it moves away from Earth. But the problem is light always has to move at the speed of light. That's the name of it, the speed of light. So light always has to be moving at the same speed. So it can't start out fast and then slow down. It has to keep the same speed. So the only way for it to lose energy is to change its frequency or its wavelength. And so what happens to light as it moves away from the Earth or some other massive body is it shifts its wavelength to a longer wavelength. And longer wavelengths have less energy than shorter wavelengths. Now on Earth this isn't even noticeable. It's not like if you shine a blue light up into the sky it suddenly turns red when you're shining it away from the Earth. That's because the Earth in general doesn't have a lot of gravity compared to a black hole. But when you get something like a black hole, if you were to shine a light away from the black hole you wouldn't even be able to see it. It would be red shifted so much. Meaning that it shifted the wavelength of light further into the infrared range and the radio range and so you can't see those. And eventually the closer you get to the black hole it shifts any light shining away from the black hole more towards the longer wavelengths and the wavelengths get so long that you couldn't pick it up with any instrument that we have. And what that means is as something moves towards it since the light we're seeing is light coming off of the object moving away from the black hole. That means that eventually the closer it gets to the black hole it'll just have less visible light and eventually less of any light that we can pick up with any instrument and so we cease being able to see it the closer it gets to the black hole. Now this time dilation at the event horizon of a black hole is actually one of the reasons why Einstein himself who invented general relativity denied the existence of black holes because it would seem paradoxical that a black hole can even form if nothing can fall inside of it. And again I want to emphasize that yes if you're the thing falling into a black hole that can happen in a finite time. You can always fall into the black hole. But I'm talking about as an observer watching something fall in. Just like us on Earth we could never watch something fall in and we could never watch a black hole form. So the weird part about all of this is we actually have confirmed and know that black holes exist in our universe, but it seems like they take an infinite amount of time to form, so how do they exist? Well obviously there are some problems here, and a lot of it has to do with that we don't fully understand gravity yet. The formation of a black hole starts on the quantum level, when two particles start getting so close together that it overcomes the strong and weak nuclear force and the electromagnetic force so much that gravity is now the strongest force and those two particles get sucked together. But for two particles to get that close together, that means that you can no longer ignore quantum mechanical effects. And we don't have a quantum mechanical theory of gravity yet. So for now I guess I'll just be dropping stuff into a black hole with Universe Sandbox. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified of my latest videos out. And remember to go check out theactionlab.com to see the new subscription box. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.